Yo, what it do guys, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Now, this video is going to be centered around for any Titan players out there, and also anybody who enjoys melee. Melee builds, survivability, being an absolute bruiser and a powerhouse within content, plenty of sustainability, really big damage, and absolutely trivializes using weapons or weaponry in any form. If any of that stuff sounds interesting to you, stick around. I will have timestamps below. You're more than welcome to go and skip to particular parts of the build. And I will also have a recap at the end of the video. So if you already understand the build, but you want an update and you just want to see what I'm already running, you can always go and skip to that part. But either way, without further ado, let's go ahead and start off with the Solar Titan build. And we're going to start off with the exotic called Symphoseps. Now, Symphoseps, to put quickly and to make it explain as simply as possible, is when you are surrounded by multiple enemies anywhere around three enemies or more anywhere around five to ten meters around you you get improved melee damage and improved super damage this is going to be important because we are looking towards a melee build and yes it does a lot of extra damage it's very important by all means now we're going to go over towards the class itself let's start off with the abilities more importantly the melee ability this is what we're centering our entire build around and believe me when i say this you'll barely be using anything else than this throwing hammer put simply again when you throw your hammer you can also go ahead and let's say it hits a wall or it hits an enemy and it drops on the ground when you go run over your hammer you can pick it back up and it will be ready to be thrown again you act you essentially have infinite hammers as long as you can access your hammer and run over it you have infinite hammers now this build can also be utilized within a duo so if you have a friend out there and you're like oh um what happens if I pick up their hammer? How does that work? Can we juggle hammers? You technically can. You don't actually steal their hammer. That's not how it works. But if you pick up a friend's hammer, as you can see on the screen here, if you pick up a friend's hammer, you will actually go ahead and get regens on your hammer if you've lost it. Let's say I throw mine really far away and then I run over their hammer. I will get regen for my hammer. They could pick their hammer back up and it could lead to some very weird interactions where you could again see on the screen, uh, you can have infinite hammer throws where someone is constantly throwing hammers and you turn into this really weird artillery unit i don't know it's a bit weird but if you're in a duo or on a trio you can mess around with this build as well and it's really fun anyways back towards the builds hammer throwing if you do happen to hit an enemy or like a boss or something it doesn't have to be a final blow when you pick up your hammer you will get cure this is a relatively small medium burst of healing okay it's just a burst of healing it's not health over time it's just a burst of healing so this is good for survival okay you pick you throw the hammer you pick it up you get healed all right so from there onwards, let's have a little look at the rest of the build. We're going to start off with the aspects. We're going to start off with something called Soul Invictus. Put this as simply as we can. Solar ability final blows will basically go ahead and defeat targets and they will create sunspots. Okay. Sunspots, again, we'll have footage up on the screen. Visually, sunspots are theory tornadoes or like hurricanes whirlwinds whatever you want to go and call them they're like a tornado that basically hover around and when you enter a sunspot you will get your abilities to regenerate a lot faster and you will also proc something called restoration now unlike cure restoration is like recovery as a stat so i've got to bring you back to this part uh recovery recovery um doesn't activate instantly you need to have to take a you need to not take damage for an X amount of time, depending on your recovery level. So the higher recovery, the less time it is before it procs. The, the lower recovery, the more time you gotta wait. So let's say you gotta wait five seconds. Now you're slowly gonna recover. If you get here as you're recovering and you're not full health, it will stop and you gotta wait another five seconds. Restoration does not work like that. Restoration is instantaneously, you'll start restorating. <laughs> Don't know if that's a word. You'll start regaining health and you cannot be interrupted. Your health will continuously restore. So this is really big. So when you create a sunspot, you want enemies to slowly trickle towards you. They will take damage over time. You will take health over time as an exchange and you will also go and get ability energy back nice and quick, all right? Easy way for you to understand that perk. From there onwards, we also have something called Roaring Flames. Roaring Flames is whenever you use a solar ability, you can stack it up to three times by getting kills and it will increase your overall damage. Roaring Flames will also have Scorch and Ignition as well, which will also help you because they will also find a way to go ahead and pair over with Soul Invictus, creating even more sunspots. Now I do quote, and it is to be known that with Roaring Flames, you need to at least get one stack with 
an ability so whether it be a grenade or potentially a super or a hammer once you've got one stack let's say that i lose my hammer on the second kill and i throw my hammer away and i'm like ah I can't stack Roaring Flames now. You still can. What you can go and do is that you can now use your uncharged melee. It almost acts as if it is like a powered melee just due to how the Titan class is. And you can actually start building up stacks with your uncharged melee from one stack onwards. If you don't have one stack and you have zero stacks and you do uncharged melee, you do not gain stacks, okay? You need at least one stack before you can start gaining stacks unstacked with uncharged melee. I know that sounds really weird. There's a lot to take in. But anyways, just to let you guys know, that's how it works. Ideally though, you want to try and keep your hammer and keep getting stacks. So you get extra damage from here. You'll get extra uh, healing from here. You get extra healing from when you're standing in there. Ability, energy, sympathy is proccing. Everything's coming together so far, right? Now we move on into the fragments. But well, before I cover the rest of this, we move into the fragments. Now for fragments, because we got restoration proc in, let's say hypothetically numbers may change in the future. Numbers may even be different now. Don't worry about the number value here, but just want you to understand it. Let's say restoration is five seconds long. Yeah. This Ember of Solace will basically double that. It will give you 10 seconds of restoration flat. So ideally, this is really good to take. We can pair that with Ember of Imperium. This is a little bit different. This one actually requires you to be active. It requires you to get ability final blows to extend restoration. So let's say that you've got five seconds flat, 10 seconds. This could give you up to 15 seconds, but it requires you to get kills. From there onwards, let's say that you've got 15 seconds. Any more kills that you get, it's basically refreshing it, if you will. Okay. And then if you don't get kills, then you're kind of slowly scaling back down until it times out. Ideally, we want to keep restoration up as long as we possibly can to keep us nice and alive so that we can run from target to target and run from enemy to enemy without dying because our health over time is just so superior to the damage that they're putting out against us. I will go and say this right now in end game content, grandmasters, so forth, you name it, master raids you will slowly get beans to the point that unfortunately i don't think the build is really worth running you're putting yourself in a bad spot and i wouldn't recommend it if you want to do it be my guest see if you can make it work for yourself but ideally especially if you're running with a fire team you're kind of trolling i wouldn't really recommend it it's a strong build but it's not as end game worthy there's just better builds like strand titan or whatever let's go ahead and take that are just way better for survival and way better for your team from now onwards, as for the rest of the fragments, we've got Ember of Searing. Defeating Scorched Targets grants melee energy and creates a fire sprite. So not only do we get a plus 10 recovery flat, which is just automatically good, but we don't really need it with the amount of healing we got. When we defeat a Scorched Target, which we will get from Soul Infictus or even potentially Roaring Flames, um, we're also going to get melee energy back as well. Fantastic, right? In case we go and lose our, um, in case we go and lose our melee uh, throwing hammer, we can also go ahead and just stand in the fire sprites, keep getting kills with like uncharged melees, and we can get our melee hammer back nice and quick. So even if you have a hammer or you don't have a hammer, you use a melee an awful lot. Just keep using the sunspots to your advantage. From now onwards, though, we create a fire sprite. Now, fire sprites are interesting. Fire sprites not only give you grenade energy, but currently right now in season 20, they're going to give us two other things. Well, mostly one other thing. In season 20, they're going to give us armor charges when we pick this up. If this video happens to exceed past season 20, which it will, go figure, and we're in season 21 or anywhere later down the line, you may not have this. But if it does come back, that's awesome. But it'll give you an armor charge. What is an armor charge? If you are wondering, please go ahead and go to my YouTube video that explains more about modding. I'll link it down below as well, um, but you can find it if you uh, haven't already subscribed. Subscribe if you're new as well, but it will explain what armor charges are, okay? So we do want armor charges. But the other thing that fire sprites will go and do, besides from giving us armor charges, besides from giving us uh, grenade energy, it will also go ahead and give us restoration. Hey, more restoration. Now you might be thinking, is that a bit overkill with what you're currently doing with sunspots and having fire sprites? Yes and no, because fire sprites, I believe, actually last a little bit longer outside of what you're doing. And you can also generate fire sprites in other ways. You could use it with particular grenades and so forth um, that you could also go and use in here. Some people are using flare up with rain of fire bites firebolts which is a uh, firebolt grenade um they are using that to go and generate fire sprites as well it's not too bad like i said if you don't want to go and play into the uh, sunspots you should always be playing in sunspots you can go and run this now you might be thinking is there anything else that i can go and run 
excuse me, maybe I don't want to go and run these. The other things that I have seen that you can go ahead and run are things like Ember of Combustion, Final Blows with Solar Super also cause targets tonight and also create fire sprites, but also gives you an extra pl plus 10 in uh, plus 10 in strength. Um, so you could go and run that or you can run Ember of Torches, which actually make your weapons radiant. Um, making your weapons radiant as of right now gives you a 20% increased damage, empowering damage to your weapons. If you're a, if you're playing with a solar warlock and they're running empowering rift or they're running well of radiance, that overrides the damage that you're getting from this, so it doesn't matter. But since I'm barely using my um since I'm barely, barely using my weapons, there's no point in me really running this. If you do want to run it, be my guest. If you don't want to, it's fine. Keep in mind as well, since the changes of Lightfall, you can hover over this and you'll see inside the bottom section, just kind of down there, you'll see uh, solar radiant effects. This also means that you'll be able to go and basically break down barriers with solar radiant effects. So if you do want to go and run it for like champions and everything, you're more than welcome to go ahead and run that as well. If you're not going against champions and you're just doing general content and you just want to trivialize it, you don't have to go ahead and run it. Okay, as for the other ones, it's up to you if you want to go and run them, but these are the more important ones in my opinion, plus basically these two are also pretty good, Combustion Torches. So that now leaves us with, what else have we got left? We've got the Tower and Barricades. Now, for the Barricades, whether you use either of them, not only are they good for defense, but I'm actually going to be using them to pair them with my mods, which I'll show you a little bit later. It's in case I lose my hammer, it's a way for me to go and get my hammer back. On top of that, I'm running healing grenades. To put this simply, why am I using healing grenades? You can use either any of these grenades if you want to. If you do, it will actually help your roaring flames if you need stacks of roaring flames. If you don't, why am I running healing grenades? The main reason why I'm running the healing grenades is because I did a solo dungeon. And what I noticed in the solo dungeon was, as I said at the beginning of the video, with Synthoseps, you kind of want to leave a couple of enemies up. And as you're leaving a couple of enemies up, um, you're not killing them. Well, if you're not killing them, you're not creating sunspots, you're not creating final blows, you're not getting restoration as much. So let's say that your restoration is slowly timing out and all you're getting is currently cure from throwing hammer. What I started to notice was if I'm still hitting the boss and the damage phase is like 40, 50 seconds, if you go into things like duality and you do like a solo duality dungeon, I tend to f find that this healing grenade was actually pretty good. Um, if I just want to keep hitting the boss and use the other adds around me to proc Synthoseps and just focus on the boss, I use healing grenade. On top of that, healing grenade can also just be good to get you out of tricky situations. Take what you want. If you don't want healing grenade, don't take it. If you do want healing grenades, it can be useful here. All right. Plus also the restoration is going to be benefited even more with stuff like this. That's what we're going to take for the, the fragments, everything else, the abilities. As for the weapons, some weapons that you can go and use, I'll run over this just very quick, quickly and very loosely. Shotguns are going to work very well. Things like one, two punch. Please keep in mind one, two punch currently, and I believe that they patched this since Witch Queen, do not work with a ranged throwing melee. That's not how it goes. So you can't just one, two punch and then use your hammer. Unfortunately, I wish we could, but we, we can't at least anymore. We can't. Um, but one, two punch can work with your uncharged melee. So that can be still pretty good. Again, I'm not really using weapons as much anyways, but since I'm really close to enemies, a shotgun kind of makes sense thematically. I'm also running Callus Mini Tool, which is a submachine gun. It's got unrelenting. Basically, if I kill quite a few enemies with it, it's going to go ahead and basically heal me, uh, which is nice. And if I uh, kill a couple of enemies as well, I'm also going to go and get things like Scorches and Ignitions. If I pair all the Scorches and Ignitions with all of the Scorches and Ignitions that I have in my build, then it kind of thematically makes sense as well. And it's also a solar weapon with a solar um, affinity, if you will. Then I finally got down here, track the cannon. Track the cannon, to put it simply, is whenever I go and shoot an enemy with it, it is a shotgun. Uh, I will basically debuff them for 30% uh, extra damage that I will now do to them. Really good on bigger enemies that you want to go and take down quicker with your melee and just keep throwing melee against them and bash them down. So bosses, mages, stuff like that, champions, whatever. Just quick switch to this, bop, and then just go ahead and start throwing melee towards them. You can also go and use uh, swords, the other half, half truths. You can get them from Dares of Eternity and the eager edge perk is a good perk to go ahead and gap close so if you see enemies quite far away and you want to get closer to them eager edge it will go ahead and lunge you towards them and now you can just start meleeing them okay those are the weapons that i'm running now finally we got the mods over here and i will try and go and do this as quick as i can as for the mods we are on the helmet i'm running hands-on 
should be self-explanatory. I'm getting melee kills, so I should be getting bonus super energy on melee kills. For what it's worth, there's not really other many better things that you could go and take in here. I am currently also running, since I've got room, if you have room, take it. Normally, you'll be running these 10 mod slots, um, anything that's like a 10 recovery or whatever. Um, but since I'm kind of maxed out on my recovery, uh, I can just take a 5 in here so I can squeeze extra things in. Uh, but at that point, I just create extra orbs of power. Why not? Um, don't really need the extra ammo because I'm not really utilizing that as much. If not, and you're playing with friends, run powerful friends. Give them some armor charges every time you go and run over an orb of power. So speaking of orbs of power, we move into the second part, the arms. Um, whenever we go and get a melee final blow, we create orbs of power. And keep in mind, when you pick up an orb of power, uh, I'm also going to be getting armor charges because you need a mod to proc that. Uh, fire sprites also give me armor charges and we'll be using those down here, down there. But whenever I go and pick up um, the orbs of power, um, I'm also generating super energy. So super energy here, super energy there. Lovely. Now, as for the next part over here, I'm running the wrong mods. It's currently this one. Impact induction is what we're going to be using. Causing damage with a melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. I think this is good because I'm going to be using melee attacks an awful lot. And like I said, I think the grenades can be a good way to get out of a sticky situation if you're running healing grenades. If you're not running healing grenades, uh, you could go ahead and throw something else in there. But there's not too many other things that I would typically go ahead and use. So I'm going to go and keep it thematically like this. Now, when it comes to the chest pieces, I'm not going to overly break it down too much. Just protect yourself, okay? I'm going to be running into a lot of melee-related people. I'm going to come out the victor. I might as well go and reduce the damage I'm taking. Long range is our biggest weakness. Keep in mind, if they're shooting you from a very long distance away, it might hurt. Protect yourself. And concussive is basically like any kind of AoE. The good thing about these three things is, no matter what faction I go against, no matter what enemy I go against, ideally, I've got a way to protect myself. If I do happen to go and run any of these affinity mods, I will always have to juggle depending on the faction that I'm against. So if you're against if you're against Cabal, you might want to run more solar, maybe a little bit of arc or voids. Get the idea? Every faction's got different amounts of damage that they do. So do what do what suits you. Okay, do what suits you. Uh, there is also this as well, emergency reinforcement. If you do want to go and chuck it in, you can go and do so. I believe it stacks on top of the resilience. It doesn't give you a tremendous amount, but I could be wrong. Um, play around with it, but that's also another way to go and protect yourself if you are in a bit of a bad spot. Then we got the uh, legs over here. Um, I'm running Invigoration. Every time I pick up an Orb of Power, I also go ahead and get Melee back. This is if I'm in a bad spot and I don't have Melee and I'm looking for a way to get my Melee back. Orbs of Power can also be a good way. If somebody supers or somebody generates Orbs of Power inside a fire team, I could also go and get it. If I generate Orbs of Power through this, uh, let's say I don't have this anymore, I can also go and use this to go and get it. See what I mean? So it still synergizes. It still works. Now also down here, Recuperation. This is kind of like Cure on the Hammer. Every time I pick up my Hammer, I'm also to get in a uh, little burst of health recuperation if every, every time i pick up an orb of power which let's be honest if i'm killing an enemy and they're dropping an orb of power odds are i'm on top of the enemy which means i also get a burst of healing back which can also be really nice so there's a lot of healing with this build if it's overkill feel free to change it but in, in fairness there's not many other things you're going running here because again you're not really utilizing weapons that much but if you do want to go and do it you're more than welcome to then we got the final part, which is just down here, and we're basically towards the end part of the video. But we got the one two finisher. Collecting the more power causes you to gain a temporary armor charge. Again, if you don't know what armor charges are, I have a video on my YouTube that breaks down armor charges. But this is basically going to be a way to consume all of the stacks of uh, armor charge that we had from the fire sprites, from the orbs of power. And if I throw my melee weapon and I don't, I don't, I can't get it back nice and quick, I'll get an enemy a little bit low. I will then use consume my finisher. So I'll kill them with my finisher, consume all the armor charges, and it will give me a big burst back. Fortunately, it doesn't quite fill me up completely. Uh, that's just that's just due to my builds. I don't know if you change the uh, strength on it. It might go and do a bit better. But for the most part, I didn't go and run Outreach. And then what I go and do is I use my Barricade after I finish something or before I finish something. And it can also go and give me my melee back. So overall, that's currently what I'm running. Now, if you do happen to uh, enjoy the video, please go and leave a like. I will go and get the build up here on the screen, so I'm going to hide my camera now as well. But uh, if you do know anybody else out there who also enjoys the video, feel free to go and share the video as well. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. But I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of uh, breakdown. Uh, again, feel free to pause this at any point if you do want any of the uh, mods or what's going to run. And if you do want, uh, if you did skip towards this point in the video and you want a bit more of a breakdown, please go ahead and use the timestamps and I can go over it about what I take and why I take it. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you do have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll try and get around to you. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and I'll catch you guys again in the next video. See you later, guys. <laughs>